Hey y'all, let's take a look at a couple things today. We'll run right through these as quickly as we can. Let's go back and look at this first. What is the answer to this right here? When you bring a power to a power, what do you do? What you're actually doing is saying, okay, x four times x to the fourth, y to the third times y to the third, z to the second times z to the second, right? We're just multiplying. So it's gonna be x to the eighth, y to the sixth, is z to the fourth because we, you know, we're actually what we're actually doing when we square something is we're multiplying it by itself. But the rule is if there are exponents to an exponent, you multiply those. Okay. How about this one? Now, what's different between that and the one above it? What what is missing? Um, excuse me. What has been added to the second one to make it different from the first one? The plus sign, right? Okay. So on this one, you cannot just go. Oh, 2x squared, that's going to be 4x to the fourth. And then, oh, plus uh, 9y squared, got it. No, you can't do that because of this plus. What this actually means is, is you're going to have to actually physically write out, probably unless you're really fast and good at this, you're going to have to actually do this and do the, you know, the 2x all the way across, done. And then 3y all the way across, done. And then add like terms and so on. So don't be fooled. When you see a plus or a minus there, don't just go, oh, I'm just going to raise the powers. No, don't do, you need to actually multiply those out. Okay. So for example, when they say x plus 3 to the third power, don't just say, oh, okay, x to the one power. Oh, that's going to be x to the third plus 3 to the cube. Got it. 27. I'm done. No, you're actually not. Okay. You're going to have to actually physically go through and multiply this three times. So what you'll need to do is go, okay, that's going to be x plus 3 times x plus 3 <coughs> times x plus 3. Okay, well, there's an, another way to do this. We'll get to that later on. What I would do if I were you is just go ahead and take two of these and multiply them through and get a trinomial. For example, x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. And done. 3x, again, is going to be 3x. And then 3 times 3 is 9. So what you have here actually is x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay, done. So you've done these two. Now, take this last example of x to the third power and multiply it all the way through. So we have x first times x squared, x cubed. x times 6x is 6x squared. x times 9, 9x. Done. 3 times all this jazz is going to be 3x squared. And then 3 times 6x is 18x. And then 3 uh, times 9 is 27. Notice that you do start with x to the third. Like we said, the fake answer up here was this. You start with that, and you do end with this, but there's a whole lot of mess in between there. So x cubed, and then let's get their squares. There's a squared, there's a squared. That'll be 9x squared. And, doop. and then 9x plus 18x is 27x. Then plus 27, and there it is. That's your actual answer. Don't be fooled into thinking that this is the answer to that. It isn't. Okay. All right. Uh, let's look at another one. Uh, type, which is solving by factoring. What is the answer to x if 13x is equal to 0? I mean, what you're saying is 13 times some number is equal to 0, right? If you were to think of this and go, oh, I'm just going to divide by 13. Okay, divide by 13. How many 13s go into 0? Zero? 0 of them do. Pretty evident, right? Pretty, you know that. Okay. What's the possibility if you have x times y is equal to zero? In other words, two numbers <coughs> are equal to, or excuse me, times in each other are equal to zero. There's three possibilities, right? Either the x could be zero, that'd make it true, wouldn't it? Okay. Or the y could be zero, that would make it true. Or both of them could be zero, and that would equal zero as well. All right. Okay. We're going to use that in just a second here. Okay. Look at this. If x plus 7 times x minus 1 is equal to 0, what are the two possibilities? Just like this equals 0 means one of these is equal to 0 or both of them. To make it true, same thing here. In other words, this x plus 7, if it were equal to 0, then that would make this true, right? In other words, if x were negative 7. You would have negative 7 plus 7 is 0. 0 times, I don't care what it is, it's 0. And the same thing here. If x minus 1 were 0, then x would be actually 1. So if x were 1, then 1 minus 1 is 0. 
I don't care what this is. If it multiplies by zero, the answer is zero, and we're correct. We're going to use that to solve these kind of problems. So this is called solving by factor. All right? Well, uh, you know, we've only learned a couple of ways to factor, and one of them is the trinomial to two binomial. So let's do that, and we know that's going to be what this is. When you see a trinomial like this, you can pretty much assume it's going to be factorable. So go ahead and bust that up into two binomials. And then, of course, it'll be x plus 3 times x plus 4 equals 0. So we have two equations here. x plus 3 is 0. x plus 4 is 0, which means x can be negative 3 for that, and then negative 4 for this. And if you want to make these those types of problems in your problem set that you go really fast and just out of there, go ahead and do that. You, you, can, you can go right here once you factor it out. You can just go ahead and write, oh yeah, x is negative 3 and negative 4 because it's the opposite of those two. Okay, let's take another example here. This is exactly the same problem. This is the same problem as that. It's just clum clumped up a little bit weirdly. What you want to do when they give you one of these trinomials is you want to create some equation that's equal to 0, which means you're going to have to go move that stuff over whatever you need to and put it in descending exponent order. So let's go ahead and do that first. So a squared stays where it is. Negative a stays where it is. The 6, though, yoink, that's out of there. It turns into a negative 6. If you move the 6, there's nothing left. So you just put a 0. So now all we need to do is just knock this into two binomials. We got an a, we got an a. It adds up to negative 1 and multiplies for negative 6. So that's going to be a plus and a minus. So plus uh, 2 and minus 3. And you can probably immediately just go, oh yeah, my answers are negative 2 and positive 3. And you got it. Okay, here's another one. Copy this down. You, can, you probably recognize that, wait, this is just the same thing. They, they just multiplied everything by x, and that's exactly right. So let's go ahead and yoink over everything to the left. So we have a positive x to the third. We have a positive 2x to the second. We have a negative 35x. And there's nothing left over the right side. That's what you want. Okay, we can't factor at this point, uh, you know, a trinomial that has a 3 as the leading exponent. So we're going to pull out the x. That's gone. And what we have left is x squared plus 2x minus 35, which equals 0. Okay, now we have an x. And let's go ahead and factor this trinomial. And that's going to be an x and an x. Multiply it to give you a negative. So that's a negative and a positive. So, negative 5 and positive 7. There we go. Now, you probably immediately recognize, oh yeah, my answers are going to be positive 5 and negative 7, right? But don't, don't forget one thing. You, this time, you have a chunk times a chunk times a chunk equals 0. That's like saying a times b times c equals 0. In this case, what are the possibilities? It's not just b times c. Oh, if b is 0, then it works. Oh, if c is 0, then it works. Yeah, you're right, but you're not quite all the way right yet. Don't forget your a. If that a is a 0, then it doesn't matter if this, you know, this could be a could be 0, and this could be negative 512, and this could be a picture of your grandmother, you know. There's her glasses, and let's see. She was very thin, and she's making... I don't know. What do grandmothers make these days? That's a rolling pin. And I don't know. She's making essential oils of some kind. Anyway. Okay, so the last thing is that this x is going to also be 0. So if x is 0, then the whole thing works. Just don't forget to put all three of those answers in there. Okay, as answers. Okay. And we just did that one a minute ago. Okay, so let's try this one. Only 0 equals 0. So let's look at this. We are not used to factoring things at this point. Uh, the trinomials that have any lead coefficient except for a 1. So we're going to look at this 2 and the 4 and the negative 70 and go, hmm, those are all even numbers. So let's divide by 2. So, oops, that's not right. That should be 2x. Two x and then minus thirty-five equals zero. Okay, so we have a two times a c. Uh, it's going to be x plus seven and then x minus five. Okay, 
and uh, now this looks just like the one we did just a second ago right there's some something here and there are two binomials and you multiply them they all equal zero right just like the one right here there's something there two binomials boom 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 okay the difference is we can't on the one previously we had oh yeah x is equal to zero because there was an x here well i'm sorry you can't say oh two is equal to zero no it isn't so don't even include this as an answer at all you would just include negative seven and positive five as your answers for those okay all right Let's take a look at A and B. So go ahead and pause it and try A and come on back when you're ready. Okay, I'm just gonna cross out this and go, okay, X plus two times X plus two times X plus two, all right? And I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, X plus two up front. I know that X plus two, excuse me, these two together, I'm just gonna go ahead and write as X squared plus four X plus four, because that's what you get when you uh, expand that and, and you know, Add your like terms together. Okay, so x times x squared is x to the third. x times 4x is 4x to the second. x times 4 is 4x. Done. 2 times x squared. 2 times 4x. 2 times 4 is 24. No, it's not. I'm just kidding. Just see if you're awake there. Okay. All right, so here like terms. I got my x to the third power done. 4x squared and 2x squared, 6x squared. Done and done. 4x and 8x are 12x and then plus 24. No, it's not 24, it's 8. Okay, just checking. All right, pause it and try B, see what you get. Okay, this looks ugly the way it is. Move everything over to the left and then have as equal zero on the right side. So let's chunk that over and then go x to the third power and then minus 16x to the second power, and then minus 36, that equals zero. All right, well, let's pull out an x here. Then we have x squared minus 16x minus 36 equals zero, okay? So we have an x. Now this might have been a little tough for you. You might not have seen this right away. The two factors of, well, they multiply to give you negative 36. One of them is gonna have to be positive, one of them is gonna have to be negative. You might not have seen this at first, like, oh, wait a minute, nine times four? Oh, 12 times three? I don't know. Well, it's negative 18 and positive two. That's what you get. Because positive two plus negative 18 gives you negative 16, and there you go. And you probably see exactly which three answers we have now, right? X is gonna be zero. It'll also be negative two, and it'll also be positive 18. Okay, all righty. Do a great job of your problem set today. Go thank mom and dad today, write them a little note or something or text them or say something nice to them today and thank them for homeschooling you. So y'all have a great day. See you next time.